Yo, my boo hi, and what's good, everyone? If you're looking to add a motorcycle restriction on your current Philippines license, specifically the Quezon City main branch, then I have you covered. If you've seen my last videos, then you probably know that I just finished motorcycle training here in the Philippines and purchased my first ever motorcycle. Links will be on the top or down below in the description for those videos. But in any case, here are some tips and a few videos of my experience adding the motorcycle restriction at LTO Quezon City. All right guys, once you arrive to LTO, the first thing you wanna do is ignore all of the fixers that will immediately greet you as soon as you walk outside of your vehicle. This is assuming that you didn't park inside the LTO compound. I always take a grab car or taxi and so I'm always hounded by the fixers trying to make money from all of the naive first timers. Thank you, Bo. Also, as a side note, make sure you're wearing pants when you visit any government office here in the Philippines. They will not let you in without pants and you don't want to head back home just to get some or you don't want to rent some pants from some of the fixers or sellers outside of those compounds. Once you made it inside, you want to head over to a yellow tent that's on the right side of the main road inside LTO. Once you've spot that yellow tent, head over to the walk-ins window and inform them that you want to add a restriction to your current license. Give them the paperwork that you have with you and they will book you an appointment. Okay, so the paperwork that I had with me was just the certificate of completion from the school I went to a few weeks prior. You're gonna have different paperwork than me depending on what school you went to. I also already did my medical exam prior to booking my appointment it's because I knew how LTO works from all of my previous visits throughout the years. However, you could possibly save a good amount of time booking your appointment first before heading to the medical clinic um, since your appointment will be set one to two hours from when you book it as a walk-in and your medical exam will only take 10 to 15 minutes so you'll save some time doing that after but i'm not sure if the staff member will require you to have your med cert before you book your appointment so double check on that okay so if you are able to book your appointment you can go ahead and head over to any lto certified medical clinic um, these are about one block away from the LTO compound. So this means you're going to have to walk back outside on the main street, which is East Avenue, and either go left or right uh, and find a medical clinic. Now, I recommend turning right once you're on East Avenue, um, just so I can show you the actual clinic that I went to. Now, I have actually went to clinics to the north and south of East Avenue, but I only remember the one to the north. So if you're a first timer, just stick to this one and you'll be OK, I promise. Okay guys, another side note, don't be tempted by the fixers outside again. They will talk to you continuously and will even follow you all the way to the clinics. As soon as you arrive to the clinic area, they will try to persuade you to go to the clinic that they earn money from. So just show them that you know what you're doing, you know where you're going, and they should leave you alone eventually. Okay, so for my recommendation, you want to go to Charlin Clinic. Um, go one block north on East Avenue, so turn right after you exit LTO and go just one block and you should see a Chow King restaurant. As soon as you see the Chow King, head upstairs, Charlin Clinic is on the second story. When you get there, provide your IDs and fill out all of the medical paperwork. The staff will guide you to a doctor or medical specialist in the back room where you'll take an exam of your eyes, You'll take a urine test and you'll also be asked about your medical history. After you're done with all of your tests, you're going to pay about 500 pesos. If you pay more than that, I suggest you question it. I have went there about two times in the past five months and both times I've paid 500 pesos for a medical certificate. Once you're finished paying, the staff will help you fill out the rest of your medical certificate. Once you're done with that, you may want to consider filling out the rest of the paperwork that you received from the, the LTO member at the yellow tent. The reason I say this is because this is the only place you'll have an actual chair and table uh, for a while. So take advantage of this and just fill out all the paperwork that you have with you that you haven't filled out 
fill it out there at the medical center because the staff there are really nice and they won't mind if you're filling out other papers. They might even help you fill it out. Okay, now that you're all done with the clinic, you wanna head back over to the LTO. You'll probably have about 30 minutes to an hour and a half left to kill until your appointment. I personally always head back to the main building and wait inside the church area. Yes, if you're new here, there is a church inside the LTO. I've been there many times with a mask going on. It's very normal, don't worry about it. Just find a seat on the outside perimeter and get comfortable because you're gonna be waiting a while. All right, when it's about five minutes until your appointment is ready, head back over to that yellow tent and they will direct you to the gate to the right. You want to show the guards at the gate your appointment time that's written on top of your application. However, if you're going during a time of COVID, you may have to submit a health declaration form and take your temperature as well. Now that you're in the second gate, you want to head over to another yellow tent. You just head straight and it's to your right a little. Once again, you want to inform the staff again that you're adding a restriction to your current license and they will take your papers and have you take a seat either inside or outside of the building, depending on how clueless you look. The first time I went there, they're very helpful. And the second and third time I went there, they didn't help me at all. In any case, don't stress too much about it, whether they helped you or not. Just listen for your name on the loudspeaker and eventually you will be instructed to sit in either window one, two, three, or four. You are in an aisle for a pre-evaluator. They will call you up to the window next. The pre-evaluator will just confirm everything that you need to do today. Uh, in this case, add a restriction to your motorcycle license. They will ask whether it's for an automatic or manual transmission license you're after. And then they will give you an application confirmation document that has a barcode on it. Save this document and go back and take a seat anywhere in the room. Okay, you're gonna wait about 10 minutes again and then you're gonna be called to window seven. However, if you're not getting this done at the Keston City branch, or maybe you're watching this video in the future, just note that any of the windows that I mentioned in this video can change at any time. So the main point I'm trying to make is just listen for your name and not rely on the windows too much as they may change at any time. So again, going back to my experience, I had to wait about 10 to 20 minutes and they called me to window seven. When they called me to window seven, I had to pay 100 pesos and give the barcode to the lady and then go ahead and I uh, took a seat again. Okay, once I took my seat, I sat there for about 40 minutes and then I heard my name being called again, this time to another window, in my case, window eight. When I was at window eight, they made me take my uh, biometrics or my fingerprint and then they had me go back and take a seat again. From there, I waited about 20 to 40 minutes again, and then I heard my name to the exam room. This building had three exam rooms, exam room A, B, and C. Your building might be different. Just listen for your name and listen for which exam room they want you to go to. Once you get to the exam room, they will take your name and they will have you sit down at an exam computer. Now let's talk about the exam because I had a lot of issues with the exam that I took. The exam that I took was 60 questions and a passing grade was to get 48 out of 60 questions right, meaning you can only miss 12 questions. I had to take the exam three times and let me explain why. So throughout my whole journey of getting my motorcycle license here in the Philippines, whether that would be researching um, online, going to the school to learn how to ride motorcycles, talking to my friends, and um, researching the LTO website, not once was I told that I had to take a written exam for the LTO uh, restriction. So you would probably understand how surprised I was when they told me I had to take a written exam. Upon asking the, uh, the exam proctor about an exam for adding a restriction, since I already had a driver's license, the proctor informed me that these are new rules for 2021. Now, he didn't tell me when this rule was implemented. Maybe this has been going on since 2020. I don't know. If you know, let me know in the comments down below. Um, but I was super surprised that I had to take an exam. I thought all I had to do was take a practical exam or a driving test, actual driving test. So of course I had no way around this. On my first day there, I just said, you know what? Let me just try maybe some of these things are um, common sense. Since I already have a driver's license from California, maybe some of the questions are the same. 
um, with the exception of a few and maybe the only ones that I would struggle with were the ones that weren't in miles per hour but in kilometers per hour or some of the local uh, rules and regulations here in the Philippines. So I decided to take the test anyway. So my first time taking the test without any study materials, guess what I got? I got a 47 out of 60, meaning I missed passing by one point. I was so upset. A lot of the questions were common sense and similar to the ones from California with the exception of a few of them. I was upset, um, but you know what? I say, you know what? I'll come back and take the exam again. I'm pretty sure I can pass it. Um, and the proctor said, why don't you go and study? Here's the link to the study guide, right? He gave me this link and so I, I saved that link on my phone, went home and studied. Studied that link for a day. I came back the next day and I took the test for the second time. When I took the test for the second time, there were a lot of motorcycle questions on the test that I didn't have on the first test. And a lot of those questions were not on the study material. And so when I finished the test, I failed again, this time with a 45 out of 60. So I asked the proctor who was the same guy from the previous day. I said, a lot of the questions were not in the study guide that you showed me. And he said, show me where you were studying. So I pulled it up on my phone, what I was studying. And he apologized. He said, I'm sorry, I gave you the wrong study guide. He gave me the driving test basically. And so here I was studying the whole day on the driving test and not the motorcycle test when I could have been studying for the correct one and I could have passed easily, right? And so he apologized and he gave me the correct link and then I had to go home again, study the correct material and I came back the next day and guess what I got on the test? I missed the test by two points. I got a 58 out of 60 because I finally was given the right material to study. So the reason I'm telling you this is to save you time and to save you trips, guys. I will have links down below of the actual study guide for the motorcycle restriction. Click on that link, guys. Save yourself the hassle. All right, guys, so if you failed your test like I did the first two times, all you have to do is sign a paper with your test score and go home. That's it. Go home and then you will come back the next day or whenever you're comfortable and do the same exact thing that we did from the beginning of this video over again with the exception of the med cert. Your med cert is good for a few weeks, I think even a month or two. So you don't have to do your med cert again. Just go straight to the yellow tent and do everything over and you'll be fine. Now, if you pass your test on the first time or you eventually pass your test, you wanna write down your score and the proctor will point you to the practical exam test. That's basically outside where the first yellow tent is, but don't stress if you get lost, just ask any of the security guards outside where the motorcycle practical test is and they'll point you to the right direction, no problem. I'm sorry, I wish I got more video of this, but when I was taking my motorcycle practical test, it was raining. So I couldn't take out my camera. It was, it was really raining when I was actually on the motorcycle. The only thing that I was able to take a photo of was the actual motorcycle course at the Keston City branch. So here they are right here. But in any case, it's really simple. You're just gonna submit your paperwork. The proctor is gonna ask you to put a helmet on, get on the motorcycle and ride the course one time. Now the test is really, really easy. Like I said, you only have to circle around the course one time and park and you're done. The only thing that's tricky about the test is the motorcycle that you're gonna be using. I had to ride a backbone motorcycle. Um, basically, that's one of the smallest motorcycles, bare bones, nothing on it. It's the average motorcycle that you see here on the streets in the Philippines. It was a lot different than the motorcycles that I rode in um, Honda Safety Driving Center. So I was totally not prepared and not ready for it. I mean, if you can drive any motorcycle at your school you'll be okay driving this backbone motorcycle um the only thing that was different for me was the kickstart i was i've never kickstarted before so i was like having trouble kicking that kickstart on um the the attendant helped me um, get it started but once it was started it was a piece of cake for me i went around the course went up an incline went down a decline and then parked it and he passed me once you're finished the proctor there will point you back to the exam room where you took your written test head back over to the exam room and the proctor there will take your paperwork and have you take another seat back outside 
at this point i was super excited guys and you should be too you are a few steps away from getting your motorcycle restriction on your license so once you're sitting outside again just listen for your name to be called you will be called to window 7 again or the cashier again uh, depending on where you are pay your fee i had to pay 385 pesos uh, to the cashier i think this is for the actual new licensed card and um, they'll have you take a seat again and wait for your name i had to wait for about 10 to 20 minutes for my name to be called at uh, windows 11 through 15. once you hear your name called guys head over to whatever window that is in my case it was window 11 they're gonna have you take again biometrics one more time and then they will issue you your brand new license with your new restriction code on it in this case motorcycle restriction code a now i have it covered with a pink paper i don't want you guys having my personal details um, but let me just show the camera right here is the restriction i'll take a photo of it so it's clear and on the back you'll have the type of restrictions that are available at the lto and the type of transmission that you are allowed to drive there you go guys that whole stress and hassle of the lto is finished congratulations go celebrate and like this video if it was at all helpful for you i mean if i was able to save anyone out there some time or another visit I feel like I did my part. If you're one of these people, please consider giving this video a thumbs up so it can help out others. And if you like my content and want to see more videos just like this, please consider hitting that red subscribe button down below. Stay safe out there and I hope to see you on the road one day. Until then, be easy and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.